West Virginia hills, how majestic and how grand With their summits bathed in glory like the Prince Emanuel's land Is it any wonder then that my heart with rapture thrill As I stand once more with loved ones on the West Virginia hills Good evening and welcome. Uh, now don't adjust your devices. This is another episode of uh, Cryptid Ramblers podcast. However, this one is special, not just for us this time. Um, as we recall today on the 20th of June, not only is it Father's Day, uh, but it is also another celebratory day. Uh, today we celebrate and raise a glass to our favourite state, West Virginia. West Virginia, baby! Absolutely. <laughs> For on this day in 1863, they officially became a state in the United States of America. Um, now, just to give a bit of uh, background onto our uh, most favourite state in the US, yes, uh, did a little bit of sort of digging, found some stuff out that I didn't necessarily know either, so uh, I thought it was quite, quite interesting, but... Um, with mm -hmm. the outbreak of the Civil War, um, Virginia, as it was then, uh, left the Union, uh, which is the collective uh, term for all of the states. Um, they they left that as a state. They they broke away uh, from it. This was with the uh, the divide in the obviously the, the Civil War in America. Um, now, at the time, no one in the western region of Virginia had slaves, although it was a slave state. And, and so by that, it meant that legally they could keep slaves. But as far as the records were concerned, there was actually no one in that region that held any. Um, mm. So for that reason, they broke apart from Virginia, thus creating West Virginia, uh, and rejoined the Union in 1863 on on this very day Excellent. Um, <laughs> now um <laughs> now for a little bit more on uh, on this uh, most uh, fantastic state <laughs> 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 west virginia is uh, a state in the a appalachian region of the u.s or appalachian however you want to say it um it is bordered by pennsylvania maryland virginia of course uh, ohio and Kentucky. Now, interestingly, we'll be spending some time there in the uh, not too uh, distant future, but we'll um, we'll say more on that uh, as the uh, episode progresses. Yeah. Um, now, West Virginia is the 35th state, but the 41st largest. Um, Charleston is its capital, and it is affectionately referred to as the Mountain State. Now, of course, it, it's been the fact that you know it's been a hive of activity that that brought you know you and I to to kind of this state. Um, yeah, and with the Indeed. yeah, and with the odd exception, of course, we haven't really left West Virginia. <laughs> no, like, no, right. like men mentally or subconsciously, I'm I, I'm a always resident thinking, <laughs> always thinking of West Virginia. It's my <laughs> home from home that I've never been to. <laughs> exactly, absolutely, yeah. Um, However, saying that, we will be, um, for the most part, um, staying within the uh, British Isles and, you know, parts of Europe. Um, although I know you've got some stories uh, stateside yeah. that you're going to share uh, sort of as well. But Quite a few. But to be fair, I made my notes before I knew that. So uh, <laughs> that's oh, why I fair enough, added then. that bit on. <laughs> well, the, well, it seems like all the, the law and the, the origins comes from europe as most comes from here tends to and but has traveled across the great water. outward absolutely yeah um so into this episode um and for those who have listened to our last which was on the missing 411 um firstly thank you i uh, appreciate the the love and uh, the listens that we've we've had yes, on that episode it's um yeah. it seems to have resonated with a lot of people so uh thanks for those that have uh, that have listened um, but to those that have, um, you will know that uh, in this episode, we'll be covering all things goblins, gnomes, dwarves, and the like. Um, now, unlike other episodes, um, and I don't know what you think, Scott, but I found this one particularly difficult um, in terms of just getting the sort of the evidence, really, and uh, yeah. the kind of the compelling encounters or the, the stories or, you know, anything that really kind of helps add any sort of weight to you know the origins of a, you know a lot of these um you know creatures mm. um how have you found it i know we spoke a little yeah, bit before I, but yeah you, you, I, I would i would echo your sentiments there really um in that 
I think because we had such a, an evidence heavy episode last time. Yeah, that true. It's this one seems very lacking. Yeah. And it, it does harken back to episodes where we're mostly talking about, well, fairy tales, really. Pretty um, much, yeah. And just retelling stories that people have told online or yeah. in, in magazines and such or yeah, journals. Exactly. Um, but obviously what we aim to do is we aim to bring you the information that we've found. Yeah. And uh, you guys get to make your decision on it. Make your own mind up. Yeah, we'll of course yeah. give you uh, our sort of, you know, view on it as as we do in our segment at the end. But for the most part, it's just to bring, you know, anything that we've found. Um, yeah, as you say to, you know, sort of to the listeners and let them, yeah, you know, make up their own minds. Um, but on that note, and you know, like the troopers that we are, let's get uh, stuck into it, shall we? Let's get going. <laughs> um, now, for those who who don't know, although I'm sure that there won't be many. Um, a goblin is a monstrous creature that appears in multiple European cultures, as we've briefly discussed. Um, stories first appeared around the 14th century, um, certainly in, um, in in England, from from what I could see. I know there were some earlier accounts from like mm. 100 BC um, in you know sort of other parts of the world, um, but certainly for for our shores, it seemed to be around the 14th century. Um, now, depending on the region of origin. Um, they t- typically take on an ever so slightly difference in things like appearance, uh, temperament, and even abilities. Um, that m- mostly quite you know compelling similarities. So if there is a difference, it is going to be ever so slight. So it'll be an item of clothing yeah. or yeah a particular skill set that it might have. Um, now they're almost always small, uh, grotesque, mischievous, and uh, greedy, so it's, it's a little, they'll rob, steal, you know that kind of thing. Um, now they are more likened to sort of fairies and demons, so it kind of takes us back to our fairies, you know, sort of episode more specifically, uh, and also to an extent, I think the Banshee episode as well, in terms of the sort of the, the, mm. sort of the demonic uh, sort of element, um, you know, to an extent. Um, now they also hold similarities with creatures that we have actually gone over before um in the fairies episode uh, which includes uh, brownies which i know we mentioned yep we've mentioned uh, dwarfs that, um duendes which hopefully i've said that that right but that's i the, think yeah uh, i think you said yeah, yeah spanish, that's how i read uh, it as well <laughs> yeah, the spanish part of the world uh gnomes of course and mm-hmm. uh imps um yes. uh now specifically the imp. Or, no, is it the imp yeah the imp as in uh, Mr. Tyrion Lannister. Tyrion, I was going to say, yeah, for anyone who might not know yeah. what an imp is, yeah, Tyrion Lannister was often uh, sort of called that as a derogatory uh, term. Yeah. So it gives you an idea on how they were... hungry little beast. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> he, he drinks and knows things. He drinks and knows things. That's what <laughs> I do. I um, am your gift. <laughs> I am your gift, yeah, exactly. Um, now, specifically, I've looked into... Uh, the English, German, Scottish, Scottish, but see if Scottish, Scottish, yes. and uh, Spanish origins. Um, mm. I know you've gone a little bit further afield across the pond yeah. with some of the stories that you've found, which we'll obviously come on to uh, a bit later. Um, but of course, with any any cryptid, and again, we've covered this in previous episodes. But with each region, um, you know, comes its own name, um, mm. and by that I mean, you know, they're all pretty much the same creature they're all a a goblin like creature but they've just taken on their own name or or nickname depending on where you find them um so actually starting with um scotland they have a they have a a goblin known as a red cap which is a malevolent murderous goblin found amongst the ruins of uh, castles um predominantly around the Scottish Scottish border. Scottish border. Um, they would be found in these um, sort of castles that particularly saw a lot of tyranny or wicked deeds carried out, you know, within the grounds. So mm. it gives you an idea on kind of what draws them into, you know, those particular parts of the uh, that negative energy. That yeah, exactly. Yeah, exactly. Uh, yeah, the remnants of yeah, sort of terrible things that had previously happened. Um, 
Now, it got its name Red Cap from the fact that um, it would soak its hat in the blood of its uh, victims. Um, now, it, wasn't, it didn't necessarily go after kind of enemies, so it didn't have any natural kind of predators or, or enemies or anything. It would literally be victims. So if people were passing, you know, the, the castle for, for whatever reason, if they were unlucky enough to have been captured by or, or, or seen by the red cap they would be mm. yeah basically hunted down and maimed and then his hat would be soaked in your in your blood um and that's lovely. where he got his pleasant little name from yeah yeah so lovely wonderful name, right? yeah um <laughs> now his uh appearance um is, is probably quite as uh sort of horrid as as his act but uh typically they are short and uh, thick set um, with an old man look, um, with prominent teeth, long limbs, and fiery red hair. So I'm guessing you can't be Scottish without having fiery red hair. I guess so, yeah. <laughs> Just to fit the stereotype, I suppose. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah was um, he wearing a kilt as well, by any chance? Well, yeah, yeah. yeah, they've not mentioned that, but no doubt. Yeah, he's playing um, a bagpipe. Yeah, exactly. Uh, throwing, throwing a great big log. Is he playing golf? <laughs> yeah, he was. <laughs> <No>. <laughs> <laughs> um, now they can be sort of driven away but this can only be done by a sh uh, branding a crucifix or by reading a scripture um, a holy scripture and chance. it was a holy scripture funnily enough mm. yeah uh, Christianity would you believe <laughs> oh. shock horror so, I know um, right so seems, yeah seems to do to... away with all of these creatures eh? I know yeah it's, uh, <laughs> yeah so reading reading that or branding a uh, crucifix was the only way that you could effectively drive them away from um, from the from the, the castle um, so yeah they're obviously pleasant sounding uh, little chaps from uh, north mm. of the border um, coming back to our uh, or coming down sorry to our our stomping ground um, England of course have the uh, Hobgoblin, and I'm sure we've got some English ales named after. I named after that say as well. You've seen some English hobgoblins. Oh well, when I, I go through that. the when I go through the description, yeah, I think we can both attest <laughs> to have uh, seen a couple on the, uh, the streets of Rayleigh at two o'clock in the morning after a, a session <laughs> after a at the. Uh, session. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Um, <laughs> <laughs> now, a hobgoblin, again, for those who may not know, um, is a creature of the hearth. Um, which in layman's terms is basically a spirit of chores. Um, yeah. so a hearth is basically like a, somewhere where you would cook food or like a, a, an oven or, 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 you know, something like that, a fire pit where you'd cook it used food. To be like the, it used to be the centre of the, the, center of the household house. community yeah. as well. Yeah, it was exactly, everything. Yeah. It, it was where they told their stories. It's where they lived. It's, yeah. Until they went to bed or went off to do the daily so chores, everyone gathered, was yeah. around the hearth or the hearth. It depends on how you want to pronounce you, it. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. And so that's um, what they were known as, creature of the hearth or, or hearth, as you say. Um, now, it was always believed to be a helpful creature, um, much like a sort of a house elf, which I think we've mentioned before. Um, mm. it, it would do chores, uh, help you tidy up, you know, clean up, you know, that kind of thing. Um but unfortunately, um, Christianity came along and, again, changed its uh, origins. And so for f some several hundred years, it's been no now known as a mischievous uh, creature, and, you know, a no-gooder, a prankster, um, mm -hmm. you know, and that kind of thing. Uh, but that certainly wasn't its um, origin. Maybe the poor little bugger got mistreated and went, right, that's it. I've had enough of you and your shit. Yeah, I've had enough <laughs> yeah. of you. I'm off. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. How, could, how could you uh, dobby yeah. like that? Eh? I know, how right? Yeah. Yeah. Uh, the audacity. <laughs> <laughs> um, now, their their stature um, is, uh, again, for the most part, they are small, hairy men um, who, like brownies, uh, are often found in human dwellings. So, again, they'd be found around the sort of the kitchen area or the you know stove, the fire pit, that kind of thing. That was kind mm. of their calling into a household. Um, which is where they then start to kind of help you out. Um, now, a little bit more on the folklore with, with this one. Um, yeah. and apparently, the the most famous hobgoblin um, is mm -hmm. actually has a name. 
Um, and he goes oh. by the name Robin Goodfellow. Um, or for those that are, for those of our listeners that are more cultured, certainly than uh, myself, um, he also <laughs> yeah. went. He also also went by the name of Puck, uh, which, ah, which may seem a little bit more uh, familiar to people, as he is uh, obviously uh, the iteration used in the Shakespeare play A Midsummer Night's Dream. Indeed, indeed, indeed. So again, if you know that oh. sort of play well, it gives you an idea on what. Puck or Robin the, the Goodfellow sort of look like temperament and yeah. uh, and also the, the character that you can expect yeah. from it as well. Yeah, that makes that makes yeah. a lot of sense. Yeah. So that's certainly I'd say the most famous. And again, it was uh, the origin was used for you know by Shakespeare to create his own yeah iteration of that, and uh, and that's what it what it become. Um, mm-hmm. Now there are um, others um, which which have all again got actual sort of names for the most part. Um, you've got uh, Billy Blind. Uh, he's another clever hobgoblin uh, who helps humans who are um, they're in sort of dramatic situations. So, it, you know, like a damsel in distress type thing. So, if you're in a bit of trouble, then uh, then, then good old oh, Billy, the, good old Billy will come along the, and help he's you the shining out. white knight sort of thing. Yeah, kind of. Yeah. Um, now he'll he'll come by and offer valuable information and advice. That will basically help you get out of said situation. Um, that's that was as far as his help seemed to stretch. I don't think it ever got kind of you know physical, physical. or anything like that. It was just <laughs> kind of yeah, yeah. It's a bit of a smart oh, ass by the sounds yeah. of it. Yeah. <laughs> Look, just don't open up the fucking door. Just don't, just don't do it. Just open the door. Just, <laughs> what are you doing? You're screaming for? Jump <laughs> yeah. out the window. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> well, that's not going to help you, is it? <laughs> yeah. Um, Sounds a bit like me, Billy. I think I've, I've changed my name <laughs> yeah. to Billy. Listen, <laughs> listen, the water works ain't gonna help, so you can stop that right now. Cry and don't help. Just walk out it. the door. Just <laughs> yeah, walk out yeah. the door. Just get on with it. Let's go. <laughs> Just get on with it, yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> right, I'm off. <laughs> <laughs> uh, now <laughs> another one uh goes by the name of Blue Birches. Um and he uh, that's the thing I was gonna say, I was gonna say he or she, but I don't know about you, but I found that from most of my research they all seem to take on the male form yes yeah um i don't know if, I, I couldn't find that there being a you particular know, reason was, for that but um you kind of jumped ahead of me there a little bit because i was going to oh, okay. say this more toward the end a bit further in but yeah that's oh, okay. exactly what yeah. i noticed as well and i only I only came into mind now because i was also reading the name of the next one blue birches which to me could be either or to be you know i don't or it could be a them or a mm. they for all we know nowadays but uh yeah so that's why it, popped into my head but um i'll, I'll go with he because that seems to follow the research but yeah. uh, he is a shape-shifting hobgoblin uh who would play harmless pranks um now this guy is mostly known for pranking a particular family of uh shoemakers from uh, from good old somerset oh, down in uh, south of the, uh, the country um and again his appearance uh much like every other hobgoblin really um is that yeah he's a, a small old man uh sort of you know hunched over a bit weathered looking uh wearing baggy clothes hobgoblin cobbler yeah exactly yeah <laughs> yeah can't say that three times fast <laughs> hey mate i've had a couple of ciders tonight and i'm, I'm surprised <laughs> i even said that yeah, true yeah <laughs> yeah it's remarkable we got it out the once yeah. um now First time, uh, mates. exactly smashed it yeah. <laughs> now the uh the next one, um, which again, I know we spoke about this um, earlier in the week when we had a little uh, a little chat. Um, yeah. The next one goes by the name of Robin Roundcap, um, but there is also a, uh, a Scottish version, uh, which is obviously Robin Redcap. Mm. Um, yeah, I got a bit confused by this one. Yeah, uh, but Not Robin yet. Roundcap uh, is the. English uh, hobgoblin, who's another hearth spirit, um, who again will help with you know chores and, and whatnot. Um, he's he supposedly haunted uh, Spalding Hall in Yorkshire um, and terrorised basically whichever family would would sort of take up residence, but not through any kind of sinister or you know mischievous means um mm. just because people didn't want a goblin in, in their stately home i'd imagine <laughs> which is well, uh, yeah. fair enough i suppose um but yeah, as i say there is is a scottish version 
um, called Robin R- Redcap. So a slight, a slight difference. Pretty much the same thing, but again, just a slight deviation on the uh, mm. on the name. Um, now this but this it, next one. So go on. sorry, is that any? So it's not like the red cap that was previously described. Then it was it's and it's a hobgoblin, a, ho- a herb spirit, a half spirit. Yeah, and but it's not one of these murderous little buggers that no dipping no. his dipping his out in blood. So I don't know. I don't know if there's there's anything. It's a bit to confusing it, but, that, isn't it? Yeah, but Robin Redcap would be the murderous little shit from Scotland. But then the English version is is Robin Round ah, Round I understand. and he seems to be the more helpful um, sort of do gooder uh, hobgoblin. But still didn't get much good praise because he he supposedly haunts a uh, stately home in Yorkshire as opposed to. Being a, hmm. a sort of a helping hand, so I think that just gives home, an idea. Is that the home on Spalding Moor? Is that the one? Yeah, I'm guessing. Yeah, I'm guessing that's what. Yeah, yeah I've just written down Spalding oh. Hall, but yeah, it did tell me the area. Yeah, it does sound right because obviously they had a load of grounds that was called yeah. something like yes, that. Yeah, I think that might be the same. same oh, that would be good. That would be you know, that'd be quite interesting. Quite to good little hunt go and have a look around in there. Yeah, that that part of the that part of the world. Um, now the next one. Surprised me, actually. I know we discussed this earlier in the week, and I think it might ring a few bells with uh, with listeners as well. But um, mm. basically, another term for for a hobgoblin from English folklore is uh, none other than a dobby, which yeah, I completely thought uh, Miss Rowling made up for Harry Potter. Um, You'd be forgiven, but no, it is actually quite steeped in heavily in, in English. Uh, folklore. Um, he takes on a slight. His origin is slightly different to that of the Dobby that we know uh, and love from Harry Potter. Um, the original Dobby was more of a uh, prankster found around the the north of England. So you know, you're, you're sort of Manchester, Birmingham, uh, mm. that, that that sort of, that north. Um, th- uh, the, the the problem with them was that their pranks would be relentless. So they might just be silly little, silly little things. Like I don't know, you'd go and uh, one of the examples was that the, the 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 family maid would milk the cow that day, mm. fill up a a milk jug, and then the dobby would run in and knock it over, pissing all the milk everywhere, and stuff like that. So fairly harmless in the grand scheme of things, but yeah. because it was relentless, it, it became. Could you imagine Somewhat. that every single day? Oh, it would drive you insane, yeah. You'd want to throttle the little bugger, wouldn't yeah. you? Yeah, well, this is kind of what happened to uh, a number of <laughs> a number of families. Again, no direct examples, but just kind of legends that are told, um, mm. associated with uh, the Dobby. Um, but yeah, they, he, he would drive people out of their homes and because they thought that leaving the home and going somewhere else would uh, rid them of uh, his pranks. But... Unfortunately, for the most part, they tend to um, attach themselves to a family. So if the family left, then the Dobby would go with them. So it was just relentless, it was basically. Never, yeah. yeah, it was never tied to the location. Yeah, it was tied to the people. Yeah, exactly, yeah. Just never never ending. Um, now, much like, I think there was a version of the uh, Banshee that this reminded me of, but... Um, there is a, a a story of one particular Dobby that lives in a cave, and would and was known for um, curing children of whooping cough. Um, oh, really? Which, which which brought me back to that uh, that banshee that would um, again live in a cave, and it was believed that they would um, give the local villagers a, a disease or a virus. But then, with the other hand, would then give them the the cure for when they came and asked for it. Um, and so that that it yes. kind of it, it was uh, a callback. So as soon as I read that, I thought, oh yeah, that, that reminds me. That of... was that was the fairy. That was the fairy episode. Was it the fairy was, one? Was it? It was the fairy episode. Yeah, right, I do remember okay. you telling that. Yeah, because yeah. I've, this is the thing, right? I've done exactly the same thing as I've been writing out my notes, and yeah. I've been <laughs> I've had to double check with the things that I've written because yeah. I'm like. I'm sure we did sure that, was that, that episode. Yeah. The thing is, all these things seem to be interlinked. They're all interlinked. Well. So that, well, that's why we pick the topics that we do, because we find that they they all pop up in each other's research. And so it gives yeah. us enough to then, you know, give them their own sort of episode. So, yeah, it's, it's, it's going to, 
yeah, I guess it's going to happen there. Yeah, they'll give him with one hand and take it in the other way. Yeah, other yeah, basically, and that's what this particular Dobby uh, yes. reminded me of. Um, now, another one, which I'm pretty sure does pop up in uh, Harry Potter, which, again, I thought was just from the brilliant mind of uh, J.K. Rowling, um, is a boggart, um, which uh, is, again, a type of uh, hobgoblin. Um, and they are believed to actually sort of derive from the original boogeyman. Now, you know, that's not referring to uh, Baba Yaga himself, uh, Mr. John Wick, mm. but the uh, <laughs> but the uh, the original with a fucking pencil. boogeyman, yeah, <laughs> yeah, exactly, yeah, <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah, the like, yeah, the uh, the original boogeyman, but they would be mostly marsh dwelling creatures, but they would have that kind of yeah horrible kind of almost like the um, chupacabra, so like a hunched over kind of dog like sort of spindly gotcha. sort of I, creature with big ears gotcha. and snarling face and the typical sort of um uh, goblin you'd see from like fantasy novels like, like lord of the rings and like the orcs. And, yeah. kind of like the orcs but more yeah, yeah gotcha. more sort of snarly and yeah sort of diminutive hot. yeah exactly yeah but they've got strong links the boggart has got a strong link to that apparently and that's 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 from oh. english folklore uh, i can't remember what iteration jk rowling uses um, in in Harry Potter, but I'm sure I'd remember that from from there as well, which is why I've written it down. Um, oh, gotcha. But uh, yeah, so that that um, yeah that concludes the English ones, which I think for the most part um, are certainly sort of nicer than the uh, the, the ones from uh, Top North. But um, <laughs> yeah, I know, right? Yeah, but it's almost uh, like Southerners still... uh, Southerners wrote this. Exactly. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, exactly. The wimpy southern hobgoblins, yeah. Um, and the brutish uh, northern uh, northern yeah, goblins yeah. from all the wall. From like, top north. Bastard. <laughs> bastard. <laughs> Dip me out in your blood, bastard. <laughs> yeah, exactly, yeah. <laughs> exactly. Um, now, moving on to the next one. I actually had to change this partway through because I was looking into one... Um, Germanic um, version, well, what I believe to be a Germanic version, but it ended up right. actually being a completely different cryptid. Um, so I don't know oh. kind of how I fell down that rabbit hole, but um, I eventually <laughs> found one closely closer linked um, to Goblin, and that's the Kobold or Kobold, uh, K O B O L D. <laughs> um, that's um, that's from Germanic folklore. Um, yeah. This is also uh, a small. Uh, childlike sprite as opposed to being an old man this is more childlike um oh, okay and it's usually invisible apparently um but it can also take on the form of an either an animal fire a candle which i thought was random um or human that sounds like the middle eastern gin smokeless fire yeah gin yeah yeah doesn't it yeah, it does. If yeah, it takes right. the form of that. fire, then, yeah, yeah, and they're and they're usually, although there's been supposed sightings, they're also usually invisible, but make themselves known by other means, with, like the smoke. What it, mm. what it reminded me of when I read this actually, I don't know if anyone else has seen it, but uh, the show Lost, when they were being trapped by the black smoke, yeah, through the jungle. It when I this when I before read the polar bears turned up, wasn't it? Yeah, around the same time. Yeah, around yeah. the same time. Um, but yeah, that it kind of reminded me of that in terms of how it kind of moves and you know oh, makes itself okay. known. When, when it describes when it describes turning into fire, it said something mm. about a smoke, and that's what that's where, where it took my mind anyway. Uh, obviously, gotcha. if anyone else read it, it might make them think of something else. But that's where that's where I went to. Um, now, again, they although they're invisible, it's believed that they live in. Um, human human homes, and when they are seen, they're dressed like peasants. So weathered, mm. sort of torn clothing, no doubt. So um, yeah, now they that, are. That makes sense because I've got a couple of stories that does mention like tattered clothing and yeah, okay and such nice. and. Yeah. 
Hmm. Okay, well, that's good. Yeah. yeah. No, so, yeah, I'll leave that there. I like it. <laughs> mm-hmm. <laughs> um, now, these, so the, the co- kobold um, is also likened to the Norse dwarf um, and another German legend, which is known as a mare. Now, they uh, they would um, th- th- this is quite sinister. This one, so the oh, the kobold on. would basically um, they would come about when, or th- sorry, that they'd bring about sleep paralysis, and then sit on the the person's chest. Yes. And just kind of yeah, sit and yeah, snarl at them. I know, I know um, exactly what you're talking about. There's a painting, a really yeah. famous painting um, that's associated. I might have with seen it actually. It sleep paralysis. On... Yeah, and it is a, it is like literally like a demon that's sitting on someone's yeah. chest. Well, this and... is the, this is the. Uh... Oh, okay. Oh. Yeah. So this is the, oh. the the actual the the mayor. This this would, so. Th- 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 it would turn up in the home. It would bring about sleep paralysis. It would then sit on the person's chest. This would then subsequently bring about that person having nightmares, which is why the creature is also known as a mare. Um, nightmare. Okay. Nightmare. Gotcha. Mare. Yeah. Um, and uh, yeah, for, uh, and I'm, I don't know. You'll correct me if I'm wrong, but I'm pretty sure the link to, or the the, the likening to the Norse dwarf is mm. essentially what we know Gimli as. Yeah. Gimli's appear- appearance has essentially been taken from the Norse mythology of what dwarfs would look like. Yeah, so Gimli so, and Lord um, of the Rings, that's pretty yeah, much so it. Which small also... in stature, long beards, cl- uh, clad in armour, you know, burning. We never see or, female dwarves either. You know, you don't. You don't. You know, they often get mistaken for the men, is what he says. The dwarf men, he does. He says it himself, yeah. yeah so. something to do with the beards, I reckon. <laughs> yeah. No. yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah. <laughs> um, and interestingly, they would they would also take on the duty of a knight. So if a family had a artefact or a, a priceless heirloom or, or even treasure, um, the kobold or the... Uh, yeah, sorry, the, the kobold would, would take on you know, the, the duty of a knight, so would stand mm. guard watching over this particular artifact or heirloom or, or whatever it uh, whatever it may be. So, um, yeah, so I thought that one was, um, yeah, I thought that one was quite cool. And I, and I liked oh, with wow. these, the, the, the dobby and then the kobold was the, the pop culture sort of references, obviously, you know, Harry Potter, Lord of the Rings, that kind of thing. So we start to learn from these things where, you know, the various, um, inspirations you know sort of come from and yeah and how they how they come to life and stuff so i quite enjoyed looking into those um now the last one i'm going to cover before we go into some stories um comes uh, comes from spain um and is uh, i believe is the tregu um yeah and that's again another small domestic goblin um, now, typically, it's known to be um, small in stature, uh, with a green face and big black eyes, uh, and it will occasionally have a limp in its right leg. Um, couldn't really see anything to explain as to why it limped, but a, a limp was associated with this particular. Um, Does that mean creature. that it's because this is an oddly specific, oddly specific isn't it? Yeah. description? Is it one thing, or does this? Is it a species of? these things that all have the same issue it would like, seem that if you see a tregu then it will all, almost certainly always have a limp along with these other characteristics like the green fa- face the, the black eyes you know the small stature it didn't say it's to like a yoda had the limp yeah pretty much yeah pretty much it didn't um yeah they didn't say why it had the limp or what kind of brought it on or whatever i didn't couldn't really see anything that went went into it but um there is another another sort of iteration because they can also have uh, dark skin and wear red clothing. So you get mm. kind of either or by the by the sounds of things. Um, now a couple of um, interesting characteristics is that they they also have a hole. It also has a hole in its left hand. Will sometimes have horns um, and a tail. Um, now again, there was no explanation as to why it had a hole in its left hand, but it would say that you know if it took on 
if if it got if it took on a mischievous you know persona or got in a bad mood it would try to steal stuff but it would always try and steal stuff with its left hand it wasn't that fucking smart then was it with it having a hole in its hand it would never be able to actually pick anything up which in turn would would lessen its its mood because it because it said that um what they'll do is when you're asleep if they get in a bad mood they'll smash your place up but then when you wake up the following day everything's as it was so it's not been kind of ah, so, so it felt guilty and put everything back to where it Probably. was supposed to be. Yeah, and... so it'd get in a bad mood, smash the place up, try and steal stuff, realize that it couldn't, and then <sighs> would, and then would do chores to, to then make itself happy. Oh fuck it! Hell, that's a complicated life, right so, there. Isn't it? Yeah, so it'd, it'd get like... in a shit mood, it ransack everything, and then feel guilty for ransacking everything, and then do the chores to clean it up, which would then subsequently put it in a good mood. <laughs> well, well, that's a roller coaster, which ride is right just there. Uh, you... yeah, ride of emotions. Isn't Don't it, get it with a tray, go guys. Exactly, okay. yeah, <laughs> exactly right. Um, <laughs> now, interestingly, the Spanish and Portuguese, who both have a version of the tragu. Uh, believe that these actually come from Celtic origin and were taken over to sort of mainland Spain um, by the Romans. And that that's where the mm. origin sort of came from, which I thought was quite, um, thought was quite interesting. Um, so, yeah. Yeah, because um, um, even at that time before the Byzantine Empire sort of made its way over to them before the Romans got there, it was mostly... Um, well, from what I understand, it became very Islamic afterward. Spain right. was very, okay. very much a, a country of, of uh, Muslim descent. Oh, right. And okay. it seemed like uh, that's where the um, the term Moors came from. So it was the land of the Moors. So the Iberian um, oh, peninsula right. means the land of the Moors. Oh, okay. which, which unfortunately more became a bit of a, a, a bit of a slur. Oh, and, uh, okay. Shakespeare used, used it a couple of times in, in his right, productions okay. and such. And I think that's when that's when it became it changed. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, it became, it became a, a bit, bit derogatory and yeah. yeah. Okay. So that's interesting yeah. though, that, yeah, I thought that, that it had more of a like a Germanic sort of descent that yeah. event even though it it stuck with it mm. and a very, very different culture took over that land. Mm. That we still have that sort of legend today. Still have that, yeah, sort of iteration of it. Yeah, which is yeah, interesting. I thought that was that was interesting. But um, yeah, they were the the more sort of um, compelling um, sort of versions of goblins, hobgoblins, that type of thing. Um, and that that sort of brings us to the end of the, uh, I guess, the mm. origins and introduction to to these uh, little creatures. Um, and I understand you've now got some actual kind of stories and sightings to yeah over yeah well that's why i thought i'd uh leave the the origins and the such to yourself so that it gave us a bit more of an opportunity to see what else there was from around the world and yeah a lot of my stuff that i found has gone stateside um that's interesting yeah yeah and uh because from the stuff that i did i didn't find anything that took me over that far you know sort of around the country so mm. um yeah it's interesting that well it seems like uh, i a lot of the descriptions you are probably going to jump on and go, oh, that sounds yeah. like this, and you might be able to even identify. But I'm going to start off okay. in South America, uh, Buenos Aires, Argentina in particular. Okay. Now, this is in 2008. And um, there was a, a unit of workers, and they were tasked with trimming back these trees um, along the uh, Avenida del Inca which is one of the big main roads heading through that area. Okay. And in particular, they were actually asked to cut back an enormous 100-year-old eucalyptus tree that had spread its branches out so far that it had actually become a danger to the other road users. Right. Now, the, tra- the tree was drastically chopped back, uh, with some parts of it actually reduced to just stumps. Um, but in the days after the extensive trimming, there were numerous witnesses who came forward and said that they had seen little men with brownish clothes emerging from the stumps in a single file formation and in most cases headed in the direction of a nearby library. Um, I don't understand the, the significance of yeah. the heading toward the library. Um, now, according to the locals, the trees along that stretch of roads 
which travels along a path with a stream as well, have long been the source of sightings of elvish or gnomish sort of beings lurking about within the branches. Right. Um, perhaps, in this case, these creatures called that huge tree home and were now upset and they were looking for a new home after it got irreparably damaged. Right. Okay. Um, so I found that one... It's interesting. As much of a... Yeah, because it was like... They, they came out of these trees, and it's from an area that they've that the locals had seen a lot of creatures within the trees. Mm. Um, but yeah. even after the tree had been chopped back, and it was not that far back, it's only 12 years ago, well, 13 years ago, really, if I'm thinking mm. about it properly. Yeah, yeah. Um, got another report from South America. Nice. Um, was compiled by researcher uh, Albert Rosales and allegedly occurred in Casablanca, Chile in okay. November 1996. In this account, a group of local students came across a procession of tiny men only around one feet in height, or one foot in height, should I say, um, and they were walking through a clearing. Now, this sounds very similar to mm. the fairy story yeah. that we uh, that we had, and I yeah. thought I'd jump, just chuck this in there. And it gets similarities uh, continue. Okay. So the little men, again, just men, were described as wearing brightly coloured clothing of different colours. And they supposedly hid behind bushes and trees once they were aware that they were being watched. Although they seemed mostly shy and elusive, one of them, who happened to be dressed in all black, okay. was reportedly maybe a little bit bolder and a bit more aggressive than the, than the others, and ran towards the students shrieking in a language that they didn't understand. He was throwing rocks and generally just trying to chase them off. Right. Now, what was weird with this account was that even though this black one, this black gnome or goblin and such, because they said that they had uh, a sort of greenish pale skin, which was weird. Okay. Um, mm-hmm. Even though this black clad one seemed hell bent on threatening the witnesses, these students, the others that were like dressed in green, red, um, and white seemed to actually wave the kids closer um, and even calling out to them. Right. But again, in a language that the students didn't understand. Okay. So it's interesting. It, it reminds me of that one that we that we uh, yeah. came attacked, across. Attacked the young girl, didn't it? Not sort of yeah. knocked her out or something, wasn't it? He hit her with yeah. the, um, the, the, it, yeah. the little woman hit her with the stick across the yeah. face. That's it. Yeah. And she could have been taken if she didn't grab mate's yeah. arm. Yeah. Yeah. It didn't really remind me of that one as well. Actually. And it's, mm-hmm. I wonder whether the different coloured clothing has a significance in the difference in temperament. Because if like he was seven dwarfs, in, maybe clad in black, you know, we see like sort of the protector or, you know, sort of the guardsman. And then those that were dressed in brighter colours, did they have a different you know, a different purpose for being out there? And was he just protecting them for... You know, you know what? I, I think that is a possibility. Yeah. I think it is a possibility because, you know, when even when you think about like Snow White and the Seven Dwarves, each of the Seven Dwarves had a very, very different personality and therefore had yeah. a very different colour. Different colour well. top or whatever, yeah. Yeah, I mean, uh, you could probably say that's because Disney was trying to make that tale into a, a more child-friendly yeah. film. Um, yeah. And... I suppose if you took it in a more cynical sort of route, that it'd be far more marketable. Mm. Um, so maybe that's the reason for it. But even yeah. like like you say, I quite like the idea that they might have different temperaments for different colours, yeah, or different roles within different the community. Roles. Yeah, yeah. I found another one from South America, um, and oh, sorry, no, this isn't this. Those are that's the end of the South America. Now it's not the only okay. place that these sort of things actually happen. Now, this one's a little bit weird. This one I found um, on paranormalabout.com, which is a subreddit. Okay. And there is a report uh, from the area of Houston, Texas, from a witness who says that one evening in March of 2003, his dog had gone uh, to chase something out in their yard, which he at first assumed was just a wild animal or a stray cat, as would be per usual. Yeah, exactly. 
Now, when the man went out to go and see what his dog was, what was getting his dog into a bit of a tiz, he claims that he saw this humanoid creature standing only one foot tall um, with a pointed hat, a white beard, and dressed, and now I'll quote this, in a clown suit without the big shoes and nose. So, right, okay. Bright colours, frilly collar. Almost like a patchy Chinese. sort of suit. That's yeah. kind of what I'm taking from that description. Yeah. Um, like a makeshift clown suit. Yeah. Okay. Um, uh, this obviously this freaked him out. So he took his dog and he ran back into the house. Um, and then he looked outside uh, through the window to see the creature eating from a bird feeder in his yard. Um, it then scurried to the porch, smiled at him, and he got a, a better look at his face. And again, it showed a pale green skin oh. um, and black eyes. Okay. Mm. Um, and then it disappeared behind the porch, never to be seen again. All right. So that, um, yeah, that sounded like um, one of the ones that, yeah, that we... Uh, sounded like a the, little the, the baby trait. Yoda almost. Yes, yeah, so, so, so like the trade with the green face, you know, the, the, the black eyes occasionally wearing red clothing. So that explains some of the, the colouring. Um, yeah. I think it was okay. weird that it, it knew that it was being seen. Yeah. And it just smiled at him. And just was like, yeah. It's like, no, you can see I'm eating from your bird feeder, motherfucker. Yeah. Yeah, <laughs> like, and I ain't going nowhere, son. <laughs> yeah, I'm gonna go. I'm just gonna hide out of sight and yeah. freak you the fuck out. Yeah, exactly. Um, but yeah, I mean, it seems like in that particular case, it wasn't ever one. seen yeah. again. No. But um, but yeah, I also found another one that was um comes from Texas. Yeah. Okay. Um, and it was originally given to uh, World UFO pho- uh, Photos. Oh wow. Dot com. So this comes from uh, a gas worker on a nearby town of Kennedy, Texas, uh, who one evening saw something odd moving about on the edges of his vision, so in his peripheries. Okay. When he looked to see what it was that appeared, um, it appeared to be a small humanoid standing only a few feet in height, dressed in some sort of strange impish clothing. Um, In this case, the witness was able to actually take a photo of it, uh, which... I'll include, wow. we'll include on their socials, on the Facebook page well, well, yeah. and uh, Instagram and such. And he said this of the encounter. I was working the night shift on an X-ray crew um, at a material gas plant. This was around 3 a.m. and there was only four of us at the plant at the time. I took this, pic- this picture after seeing something swaying side to side out of the corner of my eye. I was in the basket of a man lift coming down when I took the picture. And by the time I unhooked my harness to get out of the basket, the creature had gone. The police were called and uh, walked to the premises to make sure there was nothing untoward. Uh, the officer told me that there were 26 UFO sighting calls throughout that night. Wow. Mm. Now, if you zoom in, you can see the silhouettes of eyes and in and an elongated mouth. He has no doubt of what I believed I'd seen that night. The other person that saw it with me took off running for the truck. Now, it is a bit of a grainy photo, if I'm being completely honest. Yeah. I'll hold it up for you, Callum, at the moment. Uh, it's a well, little it's, bit grainy. Still, yeah, you can still make something out, though, can't you? Yeah. Mm, it's very much a shape there. Yeah, it definitely is, yeah. But yeah, you we'll get that go, on the... And you definitely go running if you saw that bloody thing there. Oh, it's funny if you just sitting there, like standing there, swaying side to side, yeah. like some sort of nutter, I'll be like, some sort no, of no, smackhead no. or something yeah. like that. Like, yeah, I don't exactly. want to mess with a smackhead. No, exactly. You wouldn't hang around. Yeah. I mean, I know they're, they're light as a feather. You punch them and they'd float away. But yeah, exactly, yeah. <laughs> it's not a risk still. Yeah. Not at 3 a.m. <laughs> no, definitely Fuck not. Fuck that shit, man. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> <laughs> so this next one I've got comes from the state of Idaho. And there is an account from a witness um, on thoughtco.com who says that his father had an experience back in 1965. While he was out hunting, uh, he was out out hunting uh, elk with his father and brothers at the time um, at the Salmon River. They had uh, spooked a herd of elk and attempted to cut them off further up land. At some point, though, 
he grew tired and decided to take a little break and sat on a, this large boulder. Right. And this is where things got weird. So the one who gave the account says that his father's, uh, he's, his father said, and I quote, it was a mildly warm day and he stopped to rest in the shade of some large boulders um, to, to strip off some of his gear and have a drink of water. When he sat down to rest, he felt a rock zip right by his head. Okay. Thinking it was one of his brothers playing a trick on him, he yelled to make him stop. That's when he noticed tiny footprints in the dust just underneath his feet that measured only about four centimetres long. So about an inch and a half, maybe okay. two inches. It's a bit smaller than your feet. They, they pack it in you. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> hey, look, they change size depending on footwear, yeah? <laughs> yeah. yeah? Pack that in, Mr. Long-Legged Mac Daddy. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> Put me off there, man. Sorry. Jesus. Yeah, so getting back to my people. And again, another rock was thrown in his direction a little bit closer this time. Right. Now, my dad had always been told about the little people who lived in the rocks and the crevices of the mountains and the hills. Yeah. An ancient band of Native Americans who barely escaped from the white man. They made their home in the hills and if bothered would put a curse on you if you failed to heed their warnings. So, you know, getting rocks chucked at you is a pretty good pretty warning. Pretty strong warning. Yeah, it's a in most point. people's books, yeah. Yeah, yeah, get lost. Yeah. yeah, so feeling the chill creep up his spine, he slowly rose, gathered his things, and uh, said in very slow Shoshone, I am leaving, I am sorry, I disturbed you. And as he walked away down the hill, uh, downhill, he heard small feet slapping the rocks behind him. But being a tad afraid, he never looked back. And he never told his father or brothers. And he could hardly tell me out of fear of thinking that he was crazy. I believe him. Mm. Which is yeah, fair enough. I mean, it, it seems oddly specific to be kind of made up with, with some of the, the sort of the, the details. Because I'd imagine it'd be quite blasé and it'd be quite sort of lacking in detail. But mm. the fact that you had certain details in there, which you'd normally think wouldn't necessarily be kind of relevant, um, I don't know. St yeah, it stacks was, um, up for me. I don't know. But it is I remember, weird. I remember going back a couple of episodes when we spoke about the moon-eyed people. Yeah, um, we briefly spoke about them, and it seems like that's something that crops up a lot. Mm. Is the idea of these um, small, pale, blue-eyed people? Mm. that speak a language that they don't understand. They don't yeah. often come out during daylight. They only tend to come out at night. Hence why Especially they're when you look into <laughs> goblin folk and stuff, they certainly yeah. seem to take on that appearance. Yeah. Um, there is also another uh, forest encounter of this type uh, by a Reddit, Reddit user named Alex N, who says that her and her boyfriend had a strange sighting while out hiking in the Cherokee National Forest in the US state of Tennessee. Now, during their hike, they rounded a bend and she would say that she saw, uh, she would say what she saw. We both stopped in our tracks. There was a tree directly ahead of us, about 20 feet. At the base of the tree, I briefly saw a silhouette of three beings. They were around three feet tall and very slender. All of them seemed to be holding a stick or a staff in one hand. Uh, one was holding a staff and the other, so one hand was holding the staff, the other hand was pointing at something on the ground next to the tree and all of them were looking at it. It was as though when they rounded the bend, we uh, caught a glimpse, a brief glimpse of them and then they vanished. So they caught it just on one side of the tree and by the time they got round to the other side of the tree, gone, disappeared. I did not tell my boyfriend what I'd seen, but he went on to describe the exactly exact same thing. So, of course, we ran over to the tree to see if we could discover what, uh, what was so fascinated by. I didn't expect to see anything but dirt and leaves, but there was actually a neat looking rock sitting right where they'd been pointing. 
we love collecting rocks. We find whilst hiking, but we decided to leave this one the hell alone. Probably a safe choice, I'd imagine. <laughs> yeah, I think so as well. <laughs> because again, it's that idea that you don't take something that maybe has been offered. Yeah. Or yeah. You know, if or, it's a neat a looking rock, or... maybe yeah, yeah. It could be a trap. It could just don't take anything that's been offered. Don't just don't take anything. Yeah. Tell you what, guys, don't take anything from the forest. It's not a good yeah. idea. We'll leave Doesn't this one, shall we? Yeah. Yeah. But um, little, this story does progress, in fact. Um, this particular Reddit uh, story does go. Unbelievably, the boyfriend of this witness went on to tell um, a friend from work about what had happened. And the man had his own strange story to tell. Oh, so wow. Alex N says about this encounter, when this guy was a child... He and his best friend went exploring some local caves. Mm-hmm. Mm. <laughs> he said it was at the point of honour among the local kids to see how deep they would go. You know, which is, uh, it, yeah. who goes that. the first? Oh, you'd never guess. Old Timmy went like 100 yards yeah. in. Yeah, He's a madman, you know. Yeah, that exactly. Sort of thing. Yeah. So he and his friend decided to go in further than they'd ever been before. Um, and after plodding along carefully for around 40 minutes, which is a long time. Okay, yeah, that's a long old time to walk in a cave. In, in one direction. Yeah. Like, you better that's make sure big. you can walk out 40 minutes the other yeah, way. Exactly, yeah. Um, they were startled to see uh, a light up ahead. So as they crept along toward the light, they found that it was coming from a little room-like structure off to one side of the main cave system. When they peeked around the rock wall, they saw that the light was actually being emanated from a lantern. And sitting around the lantern in a circle were several small men with beards and strange hats. And they were playing with these huge cards with weird symbols on them. So they can't have been using a regular deck of cards. Yeah. Um, But these cards that they didn't recognize, certainly not the symbols at the very least. And unlike anything that the kids had ever seen before, he said that these men were incredibly short. And for some reason, he remembers that they had seen that had these massive buckles on their shoes. For some reason, he just remembers that they had huge buckles on their shoes. Um, Just like the classic fairy tale image of a dwarf, for instance. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. As intriguing as this scene was, the kids freaked out and ran out of the cave. Probably didn't take them 40 minutes to get out of the cave. No, I'd imagine not. <laughs> um, and it seems that the, well, dwarves never even noticed them. Or didn't care. Or didn't care. Yeah, didn't care. Probably more likely. Or whatever, yeah. Yeah, because I suppose if they know that environment, they're going to hear kids walking along. Dicking about all the time, yeah, exactly. Yeah. yeah. Now, oh, there's a lot of stories. I came across a lot of stories that um, that were involved with being out there in the wilderness being part of nature, which yeah. strongly ties in with this idea of them being um, elementals or yeah. woodland folk. spirits. Yeah. yeah, woodland folk, fair, yeah. like along like, the same like sort of lines yeah. as fairies. Yeah, you're yeah. right. Um, but I found a couple of stories that actually end up being in people's homes. Now, this one story comes from the Perm region in Russia, and it comes from 1989, and it was originally published... Um, in an issue of UFO Zone. It's not a particularly long story, but it does have some interesting details. The witness claims that in July of that year, she had been asleep in her apartment when she was awoken by the instinct of something creeping over her. So some of that, that idea, you know when you always get that yeah. feeling of something's watching you? Yeah. When she opened up her eyes, she could see a short figure crouched over her with a pale grey complexion that looked ancient and large pitch black eyes like a shark, Mm. as well as a sparse beard. So he had a bit of a patchy beard going on as well. Another younger looking one then appeared and the two gnomes, goblins, whatever they may be, stared at her before vanishing to leave an orb of light in their place, which then drifted out of the room and out of sight. Wow. Wow. Yeah, so was it along the sort of lines of that? Is it Cobalt? Yeah, the Cobalt, the, uh, yeah, the German one. Yeah, the sleep paralysis, the, the yeah. sleep paralysis demon. That's it. Almost. 
Almost, it's yeah. hunting over you. Could it have been doing that, but then she woke before they had a chance sort of thing. Mm. And that's Those black eyes, of... though. Yeah. Those black eyes that, that freak me out. Um, there's another one that comes from uh, the United States. So we're going to head over towards California, Fontana in particular. And uh, this story actually comes from yourghoststories.com. Okay. Um, and one day, the, the poster's brother alleged that a very eerie experience happened in 1994 when okay. he woke up in the early hours of the day for what well, seemed like no apparent reason. He claimed, he claimed that he had sensed uh, the heavy feeling of eyes upon him, but could not discern exactly where they were coming from initially. Well, but again, just had that feeling that he was being watched. Just being watched. Yeah. Until he looked over to the doorway. This is what the poster said uh, had happened to his brother. He turned to look at the door, look towards the door um, of the room. His eyes quickly focused on a creature that was no higher than the adjacent electrical outlet. So you're thinking wow, about like the the main six, box. six inches, yeah, tops, yeah. yeah, six nine inches maybe yeah. at the very very most. Now he recalls that the creature was wearing a weird, dirty sport coat. I don't quite know what a sport coat would be. I think I don't we don't. That's not a term that we use over here in in yeah. like that the UK. Takes my mind too. Do you remember like the old, the old school zip up Adidas jackets? That's kind like of what makes shiny me think material. That, yeah, that, yeah. That kind of reminded oh. me of them, like the old the nylon old school. Is that what it is? Nylon, yeah. The old, yeah, the, yeah. the old school Adidas ones that kids used to wear. Yeah, that's yeah, I suppose, yeah that makes sense actually. Yeah. That's a weird sort of description, though, if it is wearing something like that. Yeah, well, it's kind of a sports but, jacket of sorts, isn't it, I guess? but I suppose there's 94. It could have been something but, out of the football factory or something. Yeah, yeah exactly. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, that's that type of thing. Yeah. <laughs> on an away game and decided yeah. to take on this kid. Straight out of Green Street, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Green Street. Yeah. <laughs> Excellent. Um, he also recalls that it had one of those old boat hats on, similar to that of a leprechaun. Oh, there we go. And most vividly was the sinister, over-exaggerated smile that it had. Now, fear ran through him, and he pulls the cover over, covers over his head. But at the same time, he tries to rationalise exactly what he'd seen. Um, overcoming his fear, he looked back over to the doorway, and it was still there, motionless. That seemed weird. perfectly still <laughs> with the same sinister smile. Yeah, that's weird. The night carried on, so he, he ducked back underneath the covers and was like, "Yep, yeah, okay, that's it. I'm not nope. sleeping. Yeah, that's not. I'm not sleeping." So, eventually, the sun's rays did actually make it to his bedroom. Yeah, and it was only then that he actually made an attempt to go and find the creature, and it was nowhere to be found. Obviously, um, my Where brother ended look? up. Well, yeah, I don't know. Where would you, you go looking? It could be bloody anywhere. You'd start at the doorway. Yeah, I, I suppose work your way outwards, I guess. But yeah, but yeah, then uh, what, what? Where do you go? As soon as the, mm. I suppose he's waiting for the light to come up, isn't it? Because you don't want to be traipsing around in the dark looking for some no. weird little. No, I mean that's that's what someone in a horror weird little gremlin movie. bastard. Yeah. You know, it's just yeah, exactly. Like, yeah, forget that, mate. Yeah. Um, but uh, his brother, you know, joined in with the hunt. Um, obviously, he was really, really just incredibly frightened by it. But neither of them could had any idea as to what it was mm. um he then goes on to say i've heard folklore of gnomes and goblins and the more i think about it that's kind of what it sounds like and it after this the description yeah the creepy well, after, is a new one but after this the the they experienced odd footsteps where no one else was in the house and this is a strange one clapping Right, like okay. it'd just be in the middle of the night and they'd hear like that. Right, okay. Which is a weird one. So But then could that what, be like drawing back to I think the the missing episode, um, where they said about hearing like something like clap shut, you know, like a car door, a trap door, that sort yeah. of thing. Could it be something along those lines, do you think? Or, or was it actually as simple as just clapping? 
Well, he said that it was like a, an odd um, occurrence of clapping. So I suppose you could take that any, in, in both ways. Yeah. You could take it in like a, or just a, yeah. I guess it's, it, it's not particularly accurate on that part of it. Right. Okay. Um, but yeah, I just thought that that yeah. had a lot of very, very strange. Yeah. That's just, well, that's what it made me think of anyway. Like with how we know some of the other cryptids we've looked into can kind of travel or certainly sort of appear, you know, mm. to ourselves. And the fact that that type of sound has been attributed to a lot of other encounters and, and experiences, it, it wouldn't, I think you'd, you'd be forgiven for thinking that that's maybe what it could have been. As you said, like a yeah. single clap or even like a double clap if something's been been close shut. So, yeah. That's yeah. Amazing. It's that's an interesting, interesting one. Idea. I mean, that, yeah. that one in like particular, that. that could that could have actually been like a like a hobgoblin, really. The fact that it was yeah. in someone's house. It could, it could have just been misunderstood, in all honesty. It's yeah. just like he's, he's standing there with an over-exaggerated smile. He might just be waiting for a job. Because he was just job. really happy. Yeah. Just waiting for a job. Yeah. Just the task. You yeah, know, he could have been. A, he could have been a Dobby. You never know. He could, yeah, yeah could easily have been. Yeah, no, could easily have been. Yeah. So um, another know. one, another account that comes from the same site, happened in 1969 in Indiana, and okay. it, this was told by the witness's daughter. So one night, the mother was sleeping with the window open and heard a strange noise outside. As she sat there trying to figure out exactly what it is that she heard, a bizarre little man not much taller than one foot in height, came creeping into the room through the window and standed and just stood in the shadows. Okay. The poster that? says um, it didn't scare her for some reason, which I thought was strange. It walked up to the foot of the bed, climbed up, sat down with its legs hanging over the edge. My mum didn't do anything. She said that she just stared at him. She looks... She said that he looked like a gnome, according to her description. At least that's what I came up with. He sat there trying to get comfortable, and when he was finally situated, he reached into his little bag that he was carrying and pulled out a pipe. He lit it, took a couple of puffs, turned and faced her. <laughs> it's like, because pretty I got nonchalant, high. isn't it? Because I because got, I got high. Because I got high. <laughs> climbing through your windows <laughs> yes, <sir. laughs> he's getting high yeah and the thing is poor girl she gets the fucking blame for it as well anyway oh, really? let's get to that bit <laughs> right, yeah. okay. so he said that he had some bad news about her father but not to worry he is okay uh, he continued on uh, that my father was in a terrible trouble and that he will, that she will hear about it in the morning. He tapped his pipe in his hand, jumped off the bed and crawled out the window. Okay. That's when it finally sank um, into my mum's head of what just happened. And she decided to call out for my grandmother. My grandmother came, into, came in and turned the light on and asked her why, what was wrong and asked her to explain not paying any attention to what her mother had to say, but noticed all the smoke lingering in the room and asked her if she'd been smoking. Oh, wow. Didn't believe her that she hadn't been smoking. Which, you, I mean, which you wouldn't, to be fair, if you're going into your child's, you know, room screaming in presumably the middle of the night and you instantly see smoke, you know, that's, I mean, that's certainly going to be your first go-to, not a bloody yeah. goblin. Yeah. Well, it turns out that... Uh, this this woman's grandmother didn't believe her mother's yeah. at all. Didn't. Um, but the next morning, my mother got a phone call from the army and said that my father was injured in an attack and would be home in about 10 days. Right. So this is 1969. So this is yeah. Vietnam. Vietnam, yeah. Uh, my grandmother believed her then. Um, I asked my mum why she thought that, because she's initially what it seems like that her mum said that it was a ghost, a little little ghost yeah. that just kind of popped up, walked into her room and yeah. gave her some bad news, but said, don't worry, and then, it's all yeah, going to be all right. It'll be all right, but just to let you know, yeah. Just to let you know. Um, and she said, uh, I thought it, ghosts could have flown to whatever, but, oh, this, this, sorry, she goes, so why did you think it was a ghost? And she goes, well, I could see through him. So there was a little uh -huh. bit of transparency okay. there. 
which is odd. That's interesting. Yeah, that's a new one. Mm. She goes, I thought ghosts could float or whatever. Well, why did this ghost gnome have to crawl through an open window? Yeah, you would have just know. gone through the wall if it was... If it was, yeah, absolutely. If it was a ghost. Like, yeah. As we we would know it in modern culture now, yeah. then it makes sense it would just float right the way through. But it's interesting that she said that she could see through it. Yeah, that is interesting. Almost like it's not fully yeah. there. No. no now, is. the next one that I've got actually comes from New York City, Manhattan, in fact, yeah. from a witness. Now, this one's a little bit more sinister, this one. Yeah. Um, it's come from a, a girl who, in her younger years, when she was six years old, she would often see small green eyes peering at her from the shadows as she tried to sleep. This went on for some time until one evening the strangeness progressed and she witnessed a green orb come floating out of the closet and hover in the room. As she watched it, the orb began, uh, began to morph into something very odd indeed. She goes on to say, I watched terrified as the orb constructed itself into what looked like two little greenish feet, then into greenish pants, then into what looked like a green jacket or vest top. And finally, the head appeared to be a thick, whitish, greenish beard with a pointed hat. He looked very vintage and old with beady eyes and wrinkles pulling on his pointed nose. From what I saw, he looked angry and it resembled a gremlin or a gnome-like thing. It opened its mouth, but it made no sound. His eyes were cold, and it looked very interested in my father's shoes. Okay. Yeah. He tried putting them on his feet. Oh, he tried putting um, putting his feet inside her dad's shoes, but kept walking right out of them, like his ghostly state couldn't allow him to physically wear her father's shoes. Okay. Now he tried it multiple times, but couldn't get them, couldn't get them on, and became more and more frustrated. And he finally gave up and it says here, kind of threw a little bit of a small tantrum about it. <laughs> um, and I picked, um, she said uh, there was a cup that was on the, uh, on the dresser that went flying across the room. Um, as she goes from this point, I can't remember if, I, if he saw me quickly and vanished or if he heard my mother walking back in my room with the water and vanished and a mum came in and said, what the hell was that? And obviously they then told the story and of course mum didn't believe her. But since then she had, she did see him several times after that, especially with the green eyes yeah. peering in the dark. That is interesting, that one. Mm. Isn't it? Yeah, Again, it's one... another ghostly one where it just, it's not yeah. quite there. It's interesting because the one you said before about the one that came in and you know smoked his pipe and you know gave gave her you know sort of news or whatever almost sounded like the Billy the Billy Blind um, mm. version uh, that was believed to offer valuable information and or advice to someone who was in need of it. Valuable which, information which kind it? of fitted, you know, that description. And then there was the one uh, that the story that you just told, um, where we had the one that was uh, the the blue birches who would play pranks and um, uh, would, would kind of haunt families uh, who were shoemakers. Mm. Although this yeah. is an English iteration that happened in New York, that sort of, it's a synchronicity there, isn't it? Between yeah, like, it, it, it's just said it, hobgoblin. like enamoured with the shoes. Like, yeah. what on earth are these? Like, yeah. I'm guessing I'll put my foot in it, but getting frustrated that he it couldn't could, keep his feet yeah. in it. Yeah, it's interesting that. Yeah. yeah, I do have one more. Oh, one more okay. Story. Go on then. You might like this one. Okay. So, in another account, which comes from goblinhunt.com, <laughs> and I will say I was very dubious about clicking, clicking on this that link. link. Yeah. You don't know what you're going to Because get I didn't the... know what I was going to see. <laughs> <laughs> and, I, and, you know, and I was very, very prepared to delete my search history after this. Absolutely, and, yeah. But luckily enough, yeah, it was luckily genuine, enough, yeah. I stumbled upon a, a story <laughs> about the, an actual goblin. 
All right. Good. Not okay. goblin from the night before. <laughs> a whole night of goblin. <laughs> yeah. Did a few videos of that going online, eh? <laughs> now, this story comes from the state of good old West Virginia. Yeah. Yeah, it had to happen. <laughs> there he is. <laughs> it had to happen. Good man. We're at West Virginia, baby. Let's go. And what a time to do it. <laughs> I know, right? I good thought, old... yep, I am saving this one till yeah. last, matey. Good man. Now, this, uh, like I said, comes from West Virginia, uh, where the aunt and uncle of the witness had a cosy little one-story home um, that they were about to move out of. Now, as she was helping them cleaning up the place, uh, the witness went to the spare room to fetch some blankets. And as she moved along the hallway, she noticed that door to the attic was ajar and the light within was turned on. She says uh, of a series of surreal events that followed. I had been in and out of that house all day and knew that no one else had been up into the attic. She right. says that my mother detests attic, uh, attics and my aunt, uh, my aunt won't be caught dead climbing into one at all. Right. Turns out her uncle as well. He was out right. um, running errands elsewhere. Okay. So I found this all to be a little bit strange. I continued on my way to the room where I gathered the blankets and then headed back out into the hallway. As I was leaving, I looked up into the open attic and there appeared a man. To this day, his appearance has always baffled me, for he was not so much a man, but an elf-like creature. He wore his hair long and over it was a pointed hat. His clothes were tattered and I can remember them being green. His skin was brown and his eyes were black. He was small. I don't want to say a midget, <laughs> for I mean, <laughs> to offend no one. And so for the sake of being politically correct, I will just say that he was no taller than three foot. Right. He was uh, not a lean creature, was actually quite round in the middle. He had a bit of a pot belly going on, it sounds like. He sat hunched over the square opening to the attic and looked down at me with a malicious grin, and I froze. He said, come here, little girl. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. <laughs> to which I had no response. Little girl, come up here, he said again. His voice, I can remember, was harsh, high-pitched, but at the same time, there's a deep, threatening tone. Even as a child, I knew that what I was seeing was not human and it was in no way any good. I stood there in a sort of paralysed state, staring at this thing in the attic for what seemed an eternity, while he again and again repeated, come here, little girl, come up here, little girl. Okay, then, then oh, I mean, that's fucking terrifying. That's enough that's for some, me, yeah. I, the little nope. bit is that <laughs> she's standing there paralyzed. Yeah. And she doesn't know why. She's just no, paralyzed. Not moving. Or, yeah. Is it like that she, the sleep paralysis demon? Is it is it a mm. common trait amongst certain certain goblins, maybe? It's very odd. Yeah. Very, very odd. Then, as if my brain was finally able to get through to my feet, <laughs> I ran. <laughs> I believe I would have run right through the wall of, of linebackers to get out of that house. I could hear him laughing as I took off. A dangerous laugh, one that to this day will raise the hairs on my arms and neck. What the hell? Immediately I told my mother and aunt what I had experienced and they just immediately wrote me off as having an overactive imagination. After much pleading, I got them to go into the hallway where lo and behold, the attic door was open and the light still on. The little man that I described to my mother and aunt had actually vanished by this point. It was obvious that I was not the one to have gone up there and opened it for if she wasn't the right height to even reach the door, let alone turn on the light that was inside and which actually hung another three foot above the opening. But right. needless to say, the packing was left unfinished and the three of them promptly left the house uh, with a phone call to... Uh, her uncle informing that he could finish it off. And you yeah. know what? 
I'd have been From calling seven. up Sam and going, you know what, babe? Some boxes in there. Did you fancy getting them? <laughs> <laughs> Some boxes in there, babe. That's it. What have you got to do? Oh, I've got to go somewhere else. I've got to, yeah, not go up in the loft. <laughs> yeah. yeah. That's, 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 that's me. what I've got. Um, um, yeah. yeah, I'm not going up there maybe anymore. That's, uh, maybe that's why the, un- the aunt and uncle don't go in the loft or don't like lofts <laughs> because they know yeah. that it's shit up there. The little shit bag is up there. They just don't want to admit it for whatever reason. Yeah, I know, right? Absolutely mad. So we've heard about the the origins of the goblins and uh, gnomes and dwarf-like creatures, Um, and we've heard a few stories about them. Yeah. Now I suppose it's up to those to either believe or not believe the stories. But yeah, what do you think, Cal? It's a tricky one. It's, and I think probably like a lot of listeners, I came into this probably more on the non-believer side, mm. um, and I think that was almost entirely down to how my research was going. Um, as I said at the beginning, I did struggle with this one in particular. Um, found some kind of origins and found a few kind of legends and essentially kind of fairy tales which just added credence to the particular variation of of goblin but nothing nothing really substantial like a recorded sighting or you know an event or or anything like that um so for a long while i was sort of worried with with how you know with how it was all going to go but um that being said um i also i did you know sort of finish with the, the research and as always it it takes us down a a different path to what we had uh, certainly, you know, expected. Certainly, uh, you know, from my my point of view. So, I would say that there's definitely something there. I mean, like we said in the a uh, couple of episodes back, you know, fairy, for example, is a collective term. And yeah. you know, if I essentially believe in the existence of fairies, with goblins and gnomes being one of the same, I think it'd be wrong of me to then say that I don't believe in gnomes and goblins so yeah i think for that reason alone i would have to stay firmly on the side of believing um mm. but this one's probably a little a little bit of a weaker argument but i i would find myself kind of on that on that side of the fence i think the the stories that you know that, that you found some of the legends that, that i found and i guess the fact that so many cultures have each got their own version but they're almost mm. entirely the same I think for me kind of adds a bit of credence because I think if you start reading into these things and, you know, they're all called goblins, but they're all entirely different. It's like, well, which one do you believe? Which one, yeah. you know, do you go for? But, you know, as we've seen, they've all got pretty quite, you know, quite compelling similarities. Mm. Um, you know, a lot of the... like, like, for instance, the old pointed hat. Exactly. You know, yeah. The, the either the pointed hat or the, the, the bright clothing hat or whatever, yeah. which we noticed this when we did a little call earlier on in the week and I held yes. up the, the flag. The flag. For, the state flag for West Virginia. Guys, yeah. if you well you would have seen it today. You would have seen it today. We'll it share, it again. Yeah. Um, we'll share it again. Have a look at the flag guys. Have a little bit look yeah. have a close look and see, see if, if you notice you can anything find, in the middle of it. Yeah. Yeah. Something that would look very much like a gnome hat. Yeah. You know, it's just yeah. like how have we not noticed have we not that seen before? it before? Yeah. It's one of those things that you, you don't I suppose it doesn't become apparent to you until you need to see it. I think it's, yeah. it's one of I mean, those. That's why I left that one till the end, really. To be honest, that was a good had, Yeah, that was a good find. You know, but I think that had... I think the reason for my struggle was was because I stayed on this side of the pond because the origins mostly came from you know sort of England mm-hmm. uh, and Scotland, you know, and and Ireland with the the leprechaun, but that was a whole different bloody rabbit hole that I could have fallen down. Um, yeah. I, I stayed sort of this side and yeah, unlike with like, you know, the fairies and, and the banshee and, and whatnot, there, there, there wasn't those kind of stories of sightings and encounters. Oh, and, yeah. You was expecting maybe a bit more so I was homegrown the, sort of stories. Like yeah, those exactly. Previous subjects. Yeah, exactly yeah. Especially with the origins being from, you know, from Celtic or from, you know, English background, I would have expected there to have then been associated sightings or events or mm. encounters but for, for the most part i really couldn't find anything that i could sort of chuck a pin on and be like yeah that's the one that that's the one that's got me or you know that's the one that i find yeah. the most compelling so i think it's 
it's good and interesting that the ones that you found not only are really good encounters, but they're actually on the other side of the world. Yeah. Um, so, yeah, I'd, I'd, I'd say, yeah, that, that, that's the long answer. But I think in short, mm. I would say that I'm, I'm probably just on the believe side. Yeah. I think, for I would, those reasons. I would say, I would say a similar sort of thing. I think there's a, a strong connection though, because it didn't really come up with a lot of these particular stories, but with other stories that I had found, it did come up with, mm a lot of connections to various different hotspots of high strangeness as well. Yeah. So like, for instance, the one that we spoke about with the, uh, the one in Texas, when in yeah. Kennedy, Texas, where the gas worker was working on the line That's right. and he managed to take that picture mm. of this really weird diminutive creature, which does look like it's wearing like a gnome hat. Yeah. You know, that sort of, sort of shape to it and they had 26 calls of ufo sightings that night as yeah. well so it's lending it's, itself to something yeah yeah and there's do you know what's even stranger is i because it's a couple of weeks ago i sent you a video about the ufo bigfoot connection yes you did and there yeah. is a connection there between is. strange ufo t- um uh, accounts and activity and with these weird cryptic creatures as well yeah you know, it's yeah. there's, there's definitely something going on there. Well, and that's certainly um, what was kind of alluded to, certainly f- from how I percepted it in mm. the missing 411, which is why we were, you know, interested in diving into that. Was the whole connection with possible, you know, cryptids or high strangeness, you know, unexplained disappearances, you know, and, and so that I think yeah sort of lends itself to that as well and i think that's another connection you know that i you know that i sort of made um but no you're right there are, there are connections to other strange goings on um not just sightings of you know little goblins or fairies or whatever it might be other phenomena happen at the same time which can be explained which can be seen and you know and, yeah. and as you rightly say have been photographed so Mm. Yeah, I think and we'll get that photo on on the socials yeah. as well, so you we'll guys can have a list, have a look at it. Have a look it at is, it. I suppose, it's kind of like your typical grainy sort of taken on a potato sort of. Oh, it's, it's your photo, typical, really. Yeah, it's your typical alien encounter photo, where it's been taken on yeah. a nineteen twenties bloody photo uh, uh, camera. You would imagine how bloody <laughs> the grainy magnesium and, flash. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Yeah, you, you sort of look at these. You think they're taken on bloody iPhones or whatever, which have got the best like but, cameras I mean, out you there. You can. You can see uh, it through the yeah. camera. I, I mean, is... it's, you can see a shape. You can see an outline, and you can, you can certainly see something. So I can see why you would get spooked. And mm. it's really good that he's taken that that picture. Whether people choose to believe it or not, it's certainly one of the more compelling ones that we've seen. Um, you know, for any of the the cryptids that we've we've jumped into for you know sort of a long time. So yeah, yeah. it's definitely worth checking out. But like, yeah, as you say, we'll share it on the socials. Um, at the, uh, the end of the week. Yeah, so yeah, I, I would you're, say that... on the same side. I would say, yeah, that I'm on a similar sort of side to you in that um, I think you have to take this episode with um, with the fairy episode that we did, that if yeah. we're going to say, yeah, we're getting off on this side of the fence with the fairies, then we've got yeah. to do it with the, the goblins as well. Default, because got to do it on this one, yeah. Yeah, because even like with your research on that particular episode, you said that you like with the um, the, the European, mm. I think it was the Slavic one, where yeah. they had exactly the same name for the same for very different beings. Yeah, that's right. Yeah, um, and it's I suppose that this would come under that sort of that sort of guise as, as yeah. well. Yeah, um, does, yeah. Now, the one thing that I do want to do before we wrap up, okay, is we actually have a, a listener's question. Oh, okay. So Exciting. Was, I've I've yeah. spoken to, and this comes from James. Um, and oh, okay. Regular listeners will know that James oh, yeah. um, called in with our uh, with a story about yeah. experiencing the Oz effect. That's right. What seems yeah. to be the Oz effect. Yeah. Now he's posed a question. He's been quite active in talking to me about how yeah. our research is going and yeah, I mean, how he's yeah. he's really enjoying it. He's um, so he sent me uh, sent me a message. Okay. Saying, I've just got off uh, with uh, season of, uh, episode 11. That's out of the way. Uh, still loving the content and uh, having a four year old daughter. The first part was really tough. 
in that oh, first yeah. episode, which we both experienced. That yeah, as well. we both got that as well. So yeah, it's a shared feeling, unfortunately. Yeah. Absolutely. Now, he okay. does go on to say uh, a few questions for you. Okay. And he wants to start off with this. So, druids and other variations, ancient cultures, yeah, were said to be able to transcend the veil of realms and communicate mm-hmm. through them. Yeah. Now, have we lost the ability to do so because of technology and our reliance upon it? Has it become one of the many untold things or has this veil or bridge between realms and dimensions gotten thinner? To expand mm. on that, uh, to expand on that, were creatures such as dragons and fairies, etc., more prevalent back in the day because the bridge was open and that's why we haven't found any remains or fossils. Yeah. And is it possible that it's closing or getting smaller and those creatures or energies or entities are just seeping through rather than being on our plane in abundance as they could possibly have been before? Bloody hell. That's a good question. That's that, a cracking it? question. Well done, James. A, well, yeah, he's a, that's corker, a head scratcher. Mate. <laughs> he's a banger, yeah. That's a head scratcher for sure. I mean, there's quite I don't a know, few... Jeff. I, I don't know, Jeff. It was there. I don't know, Jeff. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> I guess there's there's kind of a number of questions interlinked to all of that. So it's kind of just breaking mm. down each one. But firstly, I would say yes, I think druids do or certainly have existed. Um, you know, if you, oh yeah, that's a definite, you, yeah. If you allow yourself to believe in things like King Arthur and, and that folklore, then obviously Merlin himself um, was, uh, you know, was essentially a, a druid of sorts. So, with the stuff that is believed to have been achieved, you'd have to allow the possibility that travel between realms and dimensions, which I'm sort of a firm believer of now, anyway, mm. is possible. So. Yeah, for the most part, I think that they they do. I would agree with his point. I think, interestingly, I read an article on this not too long ago, but I believe that because of the introduction of smart technology, you know, mobile phones, tablets, computers, laptops, games, consoles, everything that kind of takes our um, our conscious in a, in a certain direction and kind of muddles it with all this sort of technology i think that has yeah. removed us quite far from the possibility of um being able to not travel to these realms or dimensions but to certainly be aware of them or you know to be aware of you know to communicate at the very least with other things yeah exactly and, and so i think that's that's a good point i think you know back in the day when a lot of these originated and when a lot of these original sightings occurred the, the, I suppose the pressures and the technology and everything that surrounds that wasn't even around, mm. hadn't even been invented. So I think what he's yeah I think what he's uh, alluding to there is uh, more so the advent of digital technology. You know, yeah, um, exactly. So yeah. also our technology with regards to radio waves and things like yeah. this, because That's what, yeah. we do know from that sort of aspect, our our air is mm. very polluted. Yeah. That case, you know, and it's very does much that have muddied. an adverse effect? Yeah, with yeah, radio waves, with telephone masts, mobile masts, you know, yeah, all, all that kind of technology, cameras, even, phones, even because yeah. um, that was like this data. is a theory that that with regards to aliens, that the reason why they popped up is because we started detonating nuclear weapons, mm. which ended up having an effect on their dimension. Yeah. Because of the various radiation, the the, the yeah. rips through space and time that the yeah. nuclear fusion creates. Yeah, and that's um, why if you draw, you know, if you draw back to the uh, the Valiant Thor episode, you know, it's believed mm. that that was the message that that he very much had that he was warning us off the use of of nuclear weapons and, and nuclear technology. And you know, people believed at the time that it was for our benefit, but you know, since I think we've both seen that, that, that there's actually a belief that. The warning was for their benefit, so for him and, and yeah. his species, that we stopped using them um, because it affected their technology and yeah, and had an adverse effect on their sort on of their planet, way of planet life or, and such. Or, well, yeah. Um, so yeah, I, th- I definitely think that we are, have been far removed from the ability of being more, 
in contact or in touch with with that type of thing and that sort of you know phenomena which i think is now why it's sort of very far and few between with people that claim to be able to have that ability and, and whatnot mm. yeah it's like, like you say like the psychic mediums and such yeah which... exactly yeah i mean I'm sort of on the fence. There are with some that, genuine articles out there. I'm sure there, there are. are. Some I mean, genuine I'm articles. Definitely on the fence with with that in terms of it being a, a you know an ability, but I, I'm not discounting the fact that it is an ability. I just think the people that we know that have it, I think, is more my is more my issue. You know, the Derek Acoras of the world. You know, it's people oh, like yeah. him that. Well, oh, Mary loves Dick. Mary loves Dick. Mary loves uh, Dick. <laughs> I think people, you know, and that's what people will remember him for. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. God bless. Yeah, but yeah, um, yeah, no, I, yeah I, so, I, so it's things. It's people like that that I think have abused the ability, and certainly for me, make it you know hard to believe. I, I, I'm not discounting the fact that it is possible. I'm just find I, I just find it hard to believe, and I think it's because of the people mm. that have exploited the ability. Um, but no, I, th- I think that it's probably something that we could all have the ability or possibility of doing. Mm. But because of, like you say, all the technologies and the advancements in, in our lifestyles, it's almost like a radio blocker or a signal blocker, um, you know, that we've kind of created ourselves that that kind of remove us, mm. you know, from that. And obviously, you know, with the, you know, the this new vaccine that we're all having that have put these chips in us, you know... <laughs> Now yeah. you know, we can and be advertised and yeah, we can get 5G and and all sorts. So it's just ever direct, expanding. <laughs> direct uplink. <laughs> direct uplink, exactly. That's exactly what it is. Can now be downloaded straight to the mothership <laughs> instead of uh, yeah. going via other means. So, uh, <laughs> but no, yeah, in all seriousness, immortal. Yeah, exactly. But no, in all seriousness, I, I think that's got that's the, 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 certainly a valid point too. That I think the technology is. And the advancements, and uh, you know, the increase in the types of waves, you know, micro waves, radio waves, and, and all that kind of thing, has it pulled us far from, you know, what we were at a time able to do? Which is why you had so many, like, you know, you know, druids, I guess, you know, magicians, yeah. sorcerers, you know, witch doctors, people that could use different types of therapies mm-hmm. and different types of communications you know has that died out you know for a reason and is it and is it because of that well yeah i mean certainly there's certainly something about the those sort of cultures um the yeah, ancient cultures that we know very little about mm. um there's for, for instance the druids we know that they existed we know yeah. that we know some of what they believed in but yeah. the thing is they never had written language so no if anything was passed down, it's passed down through through word, through teachings, through, word, yeah. through teachings, for actually yeah. speaking about it rather than it being written down and being able to translate it later on. Yeah, exactly. um, it's when you think about the various different ancient cultures that had used, say, things like stone circles. Um, yeah. Just ones that you know, the ones in the UK that really come to mind are like Stonehenge, Avebury, yeah. uh, the Ring of Brodgar up in. Um, up in Scotland Mm. there's if you've ever actually gone inside one of those circles right into the middle I mean me and Sam lucky enough last year we were lucky enough to actually get inside Stonehenge as like a little private tour sort of thing with a couple of other people and it's incredible just in there and it, which sounds odd because it's just a load of standing stones yeah really but there's so much mystery surrounding them that we know that the the blue stones in particular mm. came from a quarry in liverpool and that's over 200 miles away and but they're not the largest stones in stonehenge but, but they're still bloody heavy though they're still bloody heavy <laughs> but what's really really interesting is the acoustics of it right okay there is a very, very strange acoustics to it, almost like sound can't quite not all the sound that's coming from around the area because yeah. it's it the, the 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 landscape that's around it is just rolling hills and it's open yeah. to the wind, it's open it's to the open. elements, yeah, everything. Absolutely, yeah. And it sound travels over those bits, but the moment you step inside the middle of the circle, mm. it's almost like it can't penetrate. Right. properly 
similar to the Oz effect, then, do you think, in a way, with how yes. the sound and atmosphere sort of changes yeah. for a minute? And I think there's, um, based on the various different YouTubers that I, that I follow, that are either anthropologists, archaeologists, mm. um, such, there seems to be this idea that there is a forgotten technology that what we we wouldn't necessarily consider technology because yeah. all the technology we've got is all silicon based yeah you know so it's all this digital stuff it's all microchips electronic, it's all about uh, yeah. electronics it's all about having information right there right there right there yeah whereas which is all very much a if you think about it it's a very selfish way of technology that yeah. without any sort of waiting there's no sort of mastery of it because mm. There's no way it, you and I could take this lap, these laptops apart, yeah, bit by bit, and then put them back together. We haven't, no. we haven't mastered this technology. We're just no, definitely not. users of this. Yeah, but there's a, a strong idea that there were masters of technology in the past right. that were able to use these monuments. Um, we've seen to have derive that they are for the various different solstices or equinoxes yeah. depending on the seasons and, and such but there is a really really interesting set of stone circles and they're, they're called the ringing stones of south africa now uh, you should go and check this out Cal, because it's really interesting okay these stone circles the individual stones ring like bells like it's an actual like proper right. sounding like a bell and depending on the size they have different pitches and sounds and there's enough um archaeologists that believe that sound waves are a lost technology and that sound waves are something that we could have actually used to build these various different monuments right okay but which could have been the reason why we now lo no longer have the i the the means to access the abilities yeah. to either travel or communicate through realms so to get to james's sort of james's question really i think it is wholly possible that we no longer as a species yeah possess the ability no. easily not to, as easy as it would have been yeah yeah, and I think it is down to the reason why that there's this veil or this portal or a bridge that, that bridges our realm to another yeah. is so weak and so thin is because of our collective abilities have diminished. Yeah. I think that's yeah. wholly possible. I think, no, I think that is, that is right and certainly a, a possibility, as you say. And I think as well, when you look at a lot of these things, they're all out in the wilderness. They're all linked to the elements, to, to nature, and mm. I think it's fair to say, for the most part, a lot of us aren't as connected to those things as our ancestors would have been, or yeah. as we would have been had things turned out, you know, differently. You know, you're not living amongst the trees. You're not, you know, you're no. not living in, you know, you're not you're not living on the ground or eating from the ground as as directly as you as you would have done. So you're not sort of, you know, without sounding too airy fairy about it, you're not, you know, sort of as one with nature as you know, we would have been, you know, if anything, we're so far removed from that, that yeah. I think that has diminished a lot of senses, uh, abilities, you know, a lot of, um, yeah, a, a lot of feelings that you would have from, you know, the ground and mm. you know, the surroundings. Well, there, is, there is actually a science to what you're saying there, and it's, it is known simply as earthing. And oh, right. okay. it's the idea that it's the process of, absorbing the earth's natural electrons and such through right. the soles of your feet. Oh, right. Okay. So it's the idea of walking barefoot through woodland or yeah. over grassland. And because as we know, if we actually build up various different positive or negative charges. And the whole idea of earthing is that we bring our charge, our elect yeah. electromagnetic charge back in harmony with the earth. Yeah. So, yeah, what you're saying yeah. right there makes perfect sense. Yeah. That that's where I would sort of. Leave. We don't take a stroll in the yeah. woods much anymore, no. and we certainly don't do barefoot. It barefoot. <laughs> yeah, exactly. So, do you lose that connection? And by association, do you then lose any kind of abilities or 
yeah, senses or, or, or sort of vibes that you would get from that connection? And, and are we now so far removed, you know, from that, that it's all, as you say, it's almost like a lost technology, lost ability, mm. you know, that kind of thing. So, yeah, I'd say it's definitely a possibility. Um, and there's certainly a lot about our human history that we have no idea about as well, well exactly, there's yeah. so much so much that we don't know about yeah. um like the, the darwin's theory of evolution mm. works for pretty much everything on this planet except for us yeah even with regards to our origins i mean mm. if you start looking at anthropology above the level of what we're taught at say secondary school or high school yeah. for our american listeners yeah then you start seeing what you're being taught in those yeah. years is completely false. Nonsense. Yeah. It's rubbish. Nonsense. Uh, that's a rubbish. Part, yeah. At university level anthropology, they're teaching so much more. Mm. And the general public have no idea about it. Yeah. But it's something for you guys to actually go and look into, go I think. Look into, yeah. So I don't yeah. know. So Check it out, I know guys. there was it was quite um involved, James's question. Have we if we answered it, do you think were there other elements to it? I I, I try um, to remember the ones that I could so yeah, we um, we talked about the technology um, and our reliance upon it as well. Yeah. Um, has that has it become one of the many untaught things, or has the veil and bridge bec- between realms gotten thinner? I think it's a bit from chances. column A, a bit from column B, really. I think, I think. It's, I was going to say it's a mixture of the two. I think they've probably got thinner on the basis that people on the other side probably don't want to communicate with us as much anymore because of how things have turned out <laughs> with, yeah. uh, with humanity and stuff. But then also on the other side... We're hairless, side, we're hairless monkeys with nuclear bombs, mate, That's, who do terrible much. things to each other. If, what are we going to do to something yeah. that isn't us? You know? you know, that we don't understand, that we can't comprehend and whatever. So yeah, I think, think there's... chimps are brutal, mate. Jesus. Well, exactly. There's, so I think there's that part of it. But then, yeah, there's also the side that I think James was alluding to with the whole technology and the reliance on it and the fact we're so far removed from you know from our you know origins and from the landscape and the earth and all those other things that i don't think we have the ability or a strong enough ability to open you know said you know because i think what it is i think it's got to be a collective effort i think there are people that that are stronger with those abilities individually Mm. but I think it needs to be a conscious effort from and, right, yeah. and a collective effort from yeah. everyone to be able to open up these various different realms and travel between yeah. these sort of, sort of well, things. I think but, um, Albert Bender had the right idea when he when he got all um, all his society to get together on the same yeah. day at the same time to send the same message to try and you know communicate. And I think it's that sort of thing that you're alluding to that I think would need to be done, but probably on a much you know grander scale. But which I seems to that... be something that uh, Dr. Stephen Greer is looking to get doing with his yeah. um, Close Encounters, the fifth kind the fifth protocols, kind, yeah. um, which makes a lot of sense. But the one thing I will take from Albert Bender's story and add to it a little bit more is that idea that those creatures, those men in black, they didn't want humanity to know about them. No, and I think true. it's for the reasons that I've that I've given yeah, that, that we are said, these yeah. hairless apes yeah. with nuclear bombs that are warmongering yeah. race. We're, we're and a threat to ourselves. So who else would we be a threat to? Yeah, we're a huge threat to ourselves. And yeah. I think there, the possibility that there is things on this side of that that veil that are putting measures in place mm. that stop our collective ability to open up yeah. those those doorways, those bridges because yeah. we, mate we know the moment that it happens we're gonna go them Ooh. over there yeah through that through that portal looks like they could do with some freedom you know yeah. it's gonna yeah. it's gonna, gonna be a bit of that yeah. Yeah, exactly. america fuck, fuck yeah, yeah. <laughs> you know, it's gonna <laughs> it's, that's exactly what it would be wouldn't it yeah it kind of you know, if so go, jumping into the kind of, I mean, it, it would almost, it would almost be that. Let's give them freedom that they've already got, but tell them that they haven't got it, and then make them pay the price for it. What's happening already with it all of be, us, mate? Yeah, it? it'd be that type of thing, wouldn't it? But you know, um, we're all waiting for lockdown restrictions to end. 
fuck off. Yeah. It's supposed to be ending tomorrow, but it he's is. old Boris Johnson, the Doris yeah. dickhead, has extended yeah. it for another four another weeks. Another four weeks, yeah. So, but yeah, so it's, it's, it's definitely something like that. Um, mm. But yeah, it's, um, yeah, hopefully that's answered his question. It was, um, yeah. it was a banger. So thanks, James, for communicating and, and so, sending that one in it's definitely a so i'm go, uh, to put it so. to put it into simple terms i'm going down the conspiracy route in yeah. that there are beings from those realms over yeah. here yeah. that are closing it for us um yeah. so that we don't hurt that's them. the bit i forgot to talk yeah so that when i heard mm. that bit that instantly and this is going back to kind of um you know norse mythology again and uh and it kind oh, of okay. reminds me of the bifrost you know, yeah, it's, the, yeah. it's a bridge between realms that someone has the ability to open and close. You know, should that person be worthy, um, or, or or not worthy, as the you know the case has been. So, yeah. So as you say, yeah, going down the conspiracy route. I guess there's something like the the Bifrost that is at, that can actually be opened and closed. The connection to that bridge um, is is probably getting weaker, um, but mm. there is a you know, either one person or a, uh, you know, a, a greater power that can, you know, control that and decide who it opens for or doesn't open for. Mm. Um, and so I would suspect that it would be, yeah, something along, yeah, something along those lines, I guess. Yeah. Excellent. I'd say. Well, yeah, yeah, that's we'll a banger of a question, James. So thanks a, again a for corker, mate. sending it in. Yeah. Yeah. Keep them coming. If that's the quality of your questions, keep them coming. Yeah. Spot on. Set the so, bar yeah. now. So <laughs> we, we certainly hope we've answered that question. Hopefully. Let, let us know if we have Yeah. Tell you what, anyone else who wants to answer that question, tell yeah. us your thoughts. Get, get involved. Absolutely. If you've let got us know theory, exactly how you feel about it. Yeah. Yeah. Let us know. Even if you're not, you know, uh, confident enough to put it on the comments just drop a little message to us yeah, a private message, message or, or email it'll yeah. be great to hear exactly what you think about it so you can find us on the socials as always on uh, facebook instagram and youtube yeah. cryptid ramblers podcast and uh, you can email us directly yeah. at cryptid ramblers at cryptid ramblers uh, podcast at hotmail.com yeah so it's a goodbye from me it's a goodbye from me and remember Fear not the dark itself, but what may lurk within it. Oh, good one. <laughs> yeah, like. I like that. Very good. <laughs> All the West Virginia hills, how majestic and how grand. With their summits bathed in glory like the Prince Emanuel's land. Is it any wonder then that my heart with rapture thrill As I stand once more with loved ones on the West Virginia hills?